Quiet on set. Picture is up. All right, roll sound. Rolling. Roll cameras. Cams rolling. And three, two. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another show. Mark Hogan here with Hank Vatt, as usual, the How's man himself. We've got a great show for you today. We're excited to welcome back Miss Peyton Riley, singer-songwriter, Texas Country Music Artist of the Year. Welcome, Peyton. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. How are you doing? I'm doing very good. How are you? I'm fine. How are you, Hank? I'm doing well. Did you notice that I got rid of the big thing so everybody uh, can see each other man, this I'm, time? Uh, it's such a, a blessing not to have to look to the trees to, to talk <laughs> to the guests, and I bet it's better for her, too. Yeah, it's just weird desk mics for some reason. Anyway. <clears throat> but yeah. So you have been a busy bee. Yes, very busy. In, um, I see you're blowing up all over Montgomery County. You're in you're Nashville. You're nationwide. And uh, fresh from American Idol. Hope everybody saw that. <laughs> uh, better luck next time. But you did really well, Thank and you. I think Katy Perry is a big fat dummy head. <laughs> when were you there? Um, so the we had gone to the award show in November, and so the day after the award show, like that, I had won Young Artist of the Year. We flew to Nashville. Wow. Yes. So it was like back to back. It was very quick. Yeah, I bet. No. Oh. You know, it's such an honor to be on something like that. American Idol put out so many good artists, and mm -hmm. they've done so much good work in the whole music industry. So, I mean, just to be there would be awesome. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, Every yeah. Everybody was super-duper nice. You would have thought, like, all the musicians together, like, some of them would be, like, have been rude, but everybody was super-duper nice. Everybody was talented, and they had, like, their own, like, unique well, sound. That like, they helped were a lot, awesome. Yeah. So you got to meet uh, Luke Bryan. Katy Perry mm -hmm. and Lionel Richie. Yes. Do you understand what a legend that guy he is? He is oh awesome. Goodness, yes. Man. It was a really good honor to meet all of them. And I got to hug all of them. They touched my guitar and I was trying not to freak out. <laughs> yeah, <I> bet. <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. I'd have been freaking cool. out for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought you did real great. I saw Thank it and you. I thought it was amazing. I Thank was you like, so much. Wow, man, they're gonna they're gonna definitely move her along mm -hmm. and and I was surprised they didn't, but I can understand mm -hmm. it. And yeah. uh you know the thing that stuck out for me at least was you're definitely on your way no doubt about that mm -hmm. i mean i think you're gonna do really great in the music business i think it's just like Katy perry said it's just mm -hmm. a matter of timing yes and you just gotta kick back and wait a little while i think mm -hmm. well, she was probably thinking yeah, about you finishing coming. your your school yeah. and, and everything you're what a probably a sophomore um, i'm a freshman yes sir. okay mm -hmm. so you got oh, about two or three years yes ah the days of yore remember <laughs> being a freshman mark I was scared to death, man. <laughs> Were you? Because in, in junior high, I was kind of the big cat, you know? Yeah. And not in high school. I was a uh -uh. little cat. <laughs> yeah. I know. It sure changes, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And that was such a long time ago. It but you did weird. freshman like two or three times. You well, must have really liked it. Let's get into that in another <laughs> show. <laughs> so, yeah, I was a freshman several Did you times. get a chance to uh, actually visit with uh, the judges on American Idol and – kind of talk to them a little while yeah how bit. does that work uh, so i think people would want to know how it mm -hmm. works you know how so you go in the room and they like they can kind of sense if you're like a little bit nervous and so they try to like make a couple of jokes like one of the jokes that luke bryan made was that my guitar was bigger than me and so they're just <laughs> kind of like a lot of famous people they i guess I, this is just what I've heard. They don't understand, like, why people, like, fan, like, girl over them because they're just, like, a normal human being, just like me right. and you. Yeah. So they're just trying to make it as comfortable as possible. Yeah. And so they cracked a few jokes, and then, then we got right into it. And so what they showed was only, like, six minutes, but I was probably in there for, like, it felt like an hour, but yeah. I think it was, like, probably 15 or 20 minutes. And so after I sang my song, they just gave me as much as – advice as possible about mm -hmm. how to grow and how to go forward and they were just like really encouraging and super duper sweet and they were just really nice it was a really good experience even though <clears throat> it didn't end out how i thought it would end out it all happened for a reason and i'm happy that it went the way that it did right. how big of a crowd was there like, like how many people were yeah, there? How many people were there? So it's a two day process. So the first day you're just doing like little video like recordings about yourself in case like you move on or they want to consider you to be on T V. Mm -hmm. So there's I think 
there was five days. Mm -hmm. So I was like the last city and the very last day. So there had been people before me and like people that were going the day that I was just sitting around and doing videos. Mm -hmm. And it was in Dolly Parton's hotel. And there was... It was like jammed packed. There was so many people the first day, but the last day it wasn't that packed. But I had to say there was probably like maybe like 150 people there. Wow. Just like maybe contestants because then people brought their families and then it was like a lot of people. But everybody was super duper nice. It was very cool. What a great experience. Yeah. And I'm glad you're not real down about it because you've got a long way to go. And I think you're going to be just fine. Thank you so, so how much. does that process work? Do you apply to go in there or do they get in touch with you? How so does... they reached out to me. They have like talent people. Okay. And so at first we thought it was a scam because, you know, you get like little emails. So they and called you. Yes. You get like little DMs all the time from just like random people that are like scams. And so at first we were just like, eh, I don't know if this is real. And then this lady kept reaching back out to us. And so we were like, okay, what do we have to lose if we do it? So I yeah. get put on a Zoom call and I sing three songs for them, and I pass the first round. Then I pass the next round, because they put me on another Zoom call for that. I passed that one. And then I got put in front of the executive producer. So you move up in, like, the rankings of people that watch you. And so I passed the third one, and they were like, okay, um, we're going to sit, we're gonna be, like, keeping in touch and see, like, which city you want to go to. And we pick Nashville, because we love Nashville. Sure. We, go, we love going there. That's where your recording studio yes. is, right? Yes. We love going there. And so we picked that city, and then we had the date picked out, and then we went there. We were there for, I think, a week, but the like the whole process just only took two days. So I went in there and sang, and it was super-duper fun. Awesome. Wow. You got to really jump through some hoops and make yeah. the cut just to get there. Yes. You should be really proud of that. It's going to be weird kind of performing on Zoom. Yeah, just a little. We had, like, a lot of sound problems at first, but we got them quickly figured out. Oh, that's when my dog would go off, you know, I see a squirrel. (laughs) That's it. You're out. (laughs) (laughs) So um, let's talk a little bit about your band. I know you've got a Mm -hmm. band now, so how many members? What do they play? What are their names? So um, with all of us together, including me, there's four of us, and um, I – I met them all at separate times. So first we have my drummer. His name is Cross, and he's 17 years old. And um, all of the people in my band, we come from, like, different backgrounds. Like, I listen to country music, and they do blues, rock, like, all different kind of things. So we have Cross. He's been doing rock music since he was, like, six, and he tours with all these bands. Wow. He's been to Warp Tour, like, all that kind of stuff. Then we have um, my guitarist, who is 23. His name is Brandon, and he does blue stuff, and he's self-taught, which I think have so much respect for those people because it takes, like, a lot of dedication. Right. Guitar was super hard for me, probably just from, like, starting at a young age. I think I started playing at 11 and like just like the pain on your fingers my mom like I would have quit like a thousand times but she was like no you're not quitting and my guitar coach I like had somebody to push me and so just like him having to learn that on his own and him like knowing all the stuff it's just crazy and then we have Luis he's one of the like the oldest one he's 50 years old but he is so good like I can he can watch the video one time and then play it perfectly all the way through yes He is amazing. So that's a, the lineup we saw at Sawyer Park. Yes, yes, yeah. it is. What a what a great event that was. Yes, it was so packed much Packed to the fun. gills. There was nowhere left to park. Yeah, it was really packed. We, we were definitely, we knew a lot of people were going to be there, but like looking out in the crowd, it was like, wow, yeah. that's crazy. But it was a really good event. It turned out amazing. Yeah. So where do y'all where do y'all practice at? We practice at my house. We have okay. this little party barn um, that we usually like host all of our parties at, and so we practice in there. I feel bad for my neighbors though because um, like the couple houses down, the kids still hear us. Oh yeah. Yeah, and yeah. we practice How'd late you at find night. That out? <laughs> yeah. Um. So. They go on walks every single morning, and uh, they stopped our car and was like, you're so good. We could hear you every Tuesday <laughs> night. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. So, so is it, sorry. Is it easy to corral all those players together when you've got certain things to do, or do you have to rearrange your schedule to accommodate the same band? Um, so sometimes it is kind of hard because they have all like their own schedules and stuff and like being in a band first starting off, it doesn't pay very well. So you have to have other jobs and way to make money. So we found a day that 
works it's on tuesday so it works pretty well for everybody sometimes we have people that can't make it but we just move it around to everybody's schedule and so far it's been working out pretty well yeah it takes Good a deal. while for a band to start to mesh and yeah it does. And learn each other mm-hmm. and learn each other's personalities and yeah. stuff so all that's working out yes yeah. good thing like they're all like very talkative and very outgoing so they are really good at like meshing together and stuff like cool. that Cool. any other writers in the band or are you just writing most <laughs> of the stuff um, I wrote m- most of the stuff. I know some of them have, like, tried to do it, but I'm the only one that sings and writes songs. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So how many songs y'all got together now? Um, like how many we perform, yeah, like, that, together? Yeah, that y'all are able to Typical perform set. and everybody's got it down. So at our show that we had on Friday, it was a two-hour set, I think we played... Two hours is a long time. For it is a very a long time, especially for our third show. Yeah. And we added, I think, eight new songs, and we only had um, one practice to get it all down. So I'm very proud of like the turnout. But I think we played 38 songs. Do you do any is, covers at all? Oh, yes. We do do a couple covers because... Um, we sing at a winery, and so they're kind of like a little bit older crowd. So we had to have like dancing songs like that, like Fishing in the Dark and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And so we do have dancing songs, but we also do put my originals in there just to like promote it and um, just to show them what I can do. So speaking of originals, you've got Fireflies. Yes, coming out on May 3rd. And yeah. where's that coming out? Spotify um, and such. All of them on okay. every single thing. Every streaming platform yes, there yes, is. Sir. Great. Fantastic. And Mascara Doesn't Lie. Yes. I have that one that came out in January. That is a haunting melody. <laughs> and if I had Mascara, I think it wouldn't lie if I was listening to that song. <laughs> what else? Um, so I came out with Not As Much I Used To. That was the release party for um, Sawyer Park. And that's um, on like on the radio now. So you can call it into your local radio stations to hear it. That one's doing pretty well. I have long with cowboys that was my first radio song and it made it on texas country radio charge which was super duper exciting then i have pack in and then whenever i first started off singing i um started off doing christian music and those are just ones that i did in my game room like a little home studio and the lady that i wrote the songs with her husband had gone to school for like producing and stuff like that so he had all like the material for that and so most of my first songs were all Christian songs, so I think I have, like, four of those. But the rest of them lately have just been, like, country. And then I'm starting to go into a little bit of rock, so, like, country rock. Have you ever thought about getting a fiddle in the band? Um, we have thought about it, and we might be getting one soon. I'm rooting for you on that <laughs> one. We have a, a band that comes in, and they're they're wrapping up their – what do you call it, EP? Yeah. It's not an album anymore. Yeah, it's an EP. they got a fiddler that I, just, I could listen to that guy all by himself all day long. Yeah, he's great. Oh, that's yeah, amazing. He's What's amazing. his name? Vince. Is it Vince? No, it's not Vince, but I can't. He's Alex. He hadn't been here too many times. The thing about Alex is, is when he comes and lays down tracks, we don't have to redo it. It's it's dead on. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, he's kind of one of the only <laughs> band members that <laughs> hasn't had to come back in and re-record. Well, we like so him. He's Sounds really great. good. And... Uh, I think they're getting ready to get uh, Phil's sister to come. She's also a fiddle player, too. Dueling fiddles. I think so. That would yeah. be awesome. Yeah. But he's, well, anyway, he's really back good. to Peyton, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I saw uh, on the social media pages uh, your Star Spangled Banner. Yes. At the, what was it, the Montgomery County Mudbug Festival? Yes. Amazing. Thank you so much. And that is a hard song to sing. The range is so low to high Mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, a lot of people can't do it. You did really, really well. And look for that on on Facebook, I know of. Yes, sir. uh, that you did a great job thank you so much yeah it was super duper fun there was a lot of people what a crowd i think there's like five to six thousand it could have been like even more but the stage was pretty like high and just like looking out i wasn't too nervous like you know like i didn't get butterflies but like my body was shaking and while i was singing i was like why why am i shaking but like i wasn't like nervous so i don't know what was going on but it was super duper fun and i'm super happy because i got to open up for randy rogers like i sang the national anthem and then he went right on so that's like really cool to be able to say that i did that good job that was not easy to do i know Thank you so much. Maybe easy for you. (laughs) So do you think you're affected by different size crowds? I mean, like, is it easier for you to play for 20 people or 200? Does it make a difference? So 
It really just depends. Like, if I don't know anybody, I don't get very nervous. But if mm -hmm. I do know people, then I do get super duper nervous. Like, at Sawyer Park, I wasn't nervous. But I played a show um, on Friday at Deep Roots Vineyards, and there was, like, maybe like 50 or 60 people there and I got nervous for some reason. Yeah. I don't know, maybe it's just cuz like they're closer up like to you. Yeah. Um but at Sawyer Park like I wasn't nervous. So it just really like just depends. Yeah, it depends on the atmosphere mm -hmm. and everything else. Yeah. Yeah, I can dig it. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, that way. Kind of that way for me when I do public events. I never know if a how I'm going to feel, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So Yeah, we do some stuff uh some forums. We've got a um hurricane preparedness thing coming up. Um, and three, three to 500 people. Yeah. And then he'll just hand me the mic and say, go, do this. <laughs> keep them, keep them entertained for a second. Like, Hi everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but you get over that pretty quick. Mm, yes. I'm kind of a ham, so yeah. I'm, I kind of like it. Too. <laughs> yeah. I found that as soon as you start all the butterflies go. Oh yes. right. yeah. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for good. sure. Cause then you get like in the groove and yeah. you're like, Oh, this isn't so bad. Yeah. So how are you doing in school, Peyton? School's important. Yes, school is very important. Um, at my school, we learn grades ahead, and we move, like, very, very quickly mm -hmm. in school. And so ninth grade year has been very hard. I have missed a lot of it because, like, of American Idol recording and going to songwriters retreats. And um, – my teachers, a lot of people, like, don't understand, like, exactly what I do. They know I sing, but they think I just go on stage and sing one song. Right. And so they don't really take it very seriously. So a lot of my teachers are very supportive, but some of them aren't. So it's a lot of teaching yourself. And that's very hard because I kind of struggle with school a little bit, just like in general. But I'm getting by. Doing pretty That's good. pretty well. Yeah, how, are the, how are the kids treating you? Because I know that some kids can really be jerks. Um, most of them are pretty nice. Like after the American Idol thing, a lot of them, like you would have thought, because I like cried on national television, so you would have thought like a lot of them would probably be like making fun of me and stuff yeah. like that. And there hasn't been too much of that. Like everybody was like super understanding, like super duper sweet. Well, that's yeah. good. Yes. That's cool. Yeah. I think you just kind of so showed your soul in that one. I don't think that mm -hmm. was a bad thing at all. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was actually really good. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. So what's what's in the future for you? Have you got a big touring schedule? What's going on? So I do have a lot of shows coming up. I think um, for this year I have – like 75 shows already planned and as the months come I just keep like getting more and more and this year I think I've already played like 25 shows so it's very very crowded year but it's super duper fun and exciting I'm super excited for this ride me and my band are getting more shows all the time so that's gonna be really fun just getting my name out there writing as many songs as possible I love writing songs it's so much fun I've been doing it for quite a while now and then I'll be getting into the recording studio recording that and then right now I'm working on getting into the public schools to sing for them and talk to them but I have to go in under the mental health health category so I'm working with Love Hills Youth with Rebecca mm -hmm. Smith Nash and uh, she does free counseling for the foster kids and I've been working with her for quite a while Fantastic. just like just with the foster kids because we used to foster so it's like really important to me and um, so she's helping me with that and we started a nonprofit for me and it's called Singing Stars and so it's gonna we're bringing it to, I guess, the council or just the people that can approve it pretty soon. And I'm super excited. And I'm going to go into the schools and I'm going to talk to them just about because, you know, I'm like their age. So I can kind of connect with them and I write songs about what I'm going through, but they're going through the same thing because we're at the same age. And so I think that's really cool that I can connect with them and also speak through them with music because music can move so many people in so many different ways. And just I know like high school is like really hard for some people. So just know that can make an impact and make it a little bit better. <clears throat> I'm super duper excited. What a great idea. Yeah, that's a worthwhile cause. Yes, it is. You know, and you seem really passionate about that. Love I Hills am. Youth so. was uh, the sponsor of the Sawyer Park deal. Yes, yeah. they were. Mm -hmm. We had um, reusable water bottles for the kids where people, like, there were so many water bottles that people brought in. And just raising awareness for that I was super-duper fun. Yeah, we brought a few. 
Yeah, sure did. Thank you all so much. So no you're going to play a couple of songs for us today? Yes, I will. Thank you very much. Okay. Fireflies? Yes, definitely, of course. And what else? Um, I can play y'all Mascara Doesn't Lie. Yeah, I'd like to hear that one. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, so sure. Great. And um, I can play y'all not as much as I used to, which is one that I just came out with. Okay, great. Yeah. Fantastic. Looking forward to that. All right. Well, I guess what we'll do is we'll take a break then and uh, get the studio kind of set up so she can gear up and play a few tunes. Um, sure was great having you in again. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much Thank for you for coming having back. me. Yeah, I appreciate you coming in. I know you've got a really, really busy schedule. <laughs> and uh, we'll be following you to see what happens. And I think great things are going to happen for you soon. Thank you. So, Thank you yeah, so much. just try to stay grounded. Yes, sir. And I will. you've got a standing always... invite here at Studio yeah. One Three in Hank's Think Tank. Thank you. Absolutely. Please Thank you don't so forget much. us, little people. I won't. I <laughs> love coming here. Y'all studio is so beautiful. Thank you. You're Thanks. Welcome. We appreciate it. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. We're gonna we're gonna shut it down for a few minutes here, and we'll pick it back up. And uh, she'll be playing us some great country tunes, and we look forward to it. Mark, what you got? Well, thank you so much for joining us again. Stay tuned for Peyton Riley playing a couple of tunes and like and subscribe. You cannot imagine how much how much that helps us. I'll stumble through this in a second. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much. Here's Peyton. There you go. All right. Okay, I'm going to sing y'all a song that I got to sing on season 22 of American Idol. And I wrote this song because recently I've hurt somebody that was really important to me. And um, it really took a big toll on me. But I, finally, after a year, I realized that everything happens for a reason. And God has a plan for everything. And this song is coming out on May 3rd. And it's called Fireflies. <laughs>
song is called Mascara Doesn't Lie. And I wrote this song when I was having a pretty bad day. Me and my boyfriend had just broken up, and me and my friend group, we had been friends since the first grade. We kind of parted ways, so I was having a pretty rough week. And I wrote this song during a Zoom call, and whenever I was writing it, I just wanted other people to know that we're having a bad day, that the bad days always get better. This call mascara doesn't lie. Remember those heels that made me taller, blonde hair curled and over the shoulder. Kept my head up and my shoulders back Put on cover, girl, and think Is this what really makes me great? And I wonder if that's good enough for you Broken heart from a boy mind limited edition and me and my good friend Hadley Joe we wrote this song in the lobby of the hotel in Nashville and one of our favorite songs to sing together is Hell on Hills by the Pistol Annies so we kind of wrote this song kind of thinking of that in mind but lately I've been kind of on a 2000s rock kick so I changed it up a little bit and we're going to be recording this song soon this is called limited edition <laughs>
stormy eyes like pure snake venom. Velvet never looks so damn delicate. If you're looking for trouble, I'm a specialist. I did.